Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy Wednesday morning. Yes, I believe it is Wednesday. It's snowing outside. It's a nice little blizzard once again in Helsinki, Finland. Very, 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 very cold. Very early morning as well. But as always, wish you the best of the best Mondays. No, nope, Wednesdays possible out there in cryptocurrency land. Let's get in a live scene right over here. Bitcoin not doing too much in the overnight session. However, with it doing nothing, there are a few things to be to be aware of right now. So let's zoom in right over here. And again, still following up on the higher level dildo timeframes, the daily. As long as we are essentially respecting this red 10 simple moon average um, as resistance. I don't really have any reason to believe that this is a inflection point what we're doing over here. Now, yes, this was a massive wick to the downside, which is known as a bull wick. And typically that does get followed up. However, have we already followed it up? Well, you know, working off of uh, working off $200 uh, from that low, you could certainly make the argument for that. And for the people who had been representing this as a symmetrical triangle, uh, going all the way back on over here, well, you can see that we have also found resistance right around the former support of that, just retesting that area. Very common stuff, very, you know, you know, not not out of the ordinary or anything like that. And as long as we're below this 10 simple moon average right over here, anytime that I see that when, you know, when it when an asset is trading above or below all the uh, all the moving averages, well, I play to the downside. Uh, doesn't mean that I can't break to the upside over here. Uh, no, no doubt about that. But let's zoom in and do a little bit of a dissection. I'm actually going to get rid of this guy right now because it's more important to be focusing on other things. As uh, I don't, I, I don't believe that that's a symmetrical triangle to begin with. So that you know, when it even broke that area to begin with, it wasn't a big deal to me. All the people getting super bearish off that. No, wrong. It's it's not the right time. Again, the 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 key is in the volume catcher's right over here, which again is extremely corrective by nature this nice orderly drop off in volume um as long as we're kind of just just strolling along this area right over here and price actions between the low 3000s and the high fourth or sorry in the low 4000s uh, nothing's really changed from a macro perspective it's just consolidation coming off of a nasty 50 a little bit over 50 percent dump from uh from middle of of november anybody's getting this guy off and focusing once again on the things that i believe are still very much in play this guy right over here this symmetrical triangle still you know very much in play as long as we are respecting the breakdown point of 3850 and the measure move on this baby is broken is pointing us all the way down to the former lows essentially around 3250 ish area again this is th th this kind of is my general disposition as long as we are respecting the breakdown trend line right over here as resistance which would be coming in right around about 3850 yeah now of course in this area right over here people are trying to make sense of this price action as uh, i see people trying to relate it as uh like a, a, a diamond bottom a diamond top in some cases as well uh, a couple of flags i would say that we just don't have have enough information yet and that's really that's really what trading is a lot of the time we don't have enough data on the charts to really be in in, in a real position now when i look at this uh, the only thing that I can come up with is essentially we are still respecting this area as resistance. And this you could, as, as we said before, just look at this as a retest of this broken trend line. But remember, the volume characteristics on this are not really giving us any, any, any severe signal either which way. We didn't have a true breakdown. We're not really breaking out to the upside either. So I'm more hesitant to really call this anything. And I just say, you know what? A lot of the time, there's just nothing to be done. There's just nothing to be done. Obviously, this guy, this guy breaks right over here was the last uh, real signal that I've got for a trade. Um, anything after that is really just more of the same until told otherwise. Are we just putting in another lower high right here? The four hour did just crack through the 21 exponential moving average and uh, actually hang a little bit lower right now. Um, but as far as our oscillators go, which we did just get another tick on the on the four hour, um, four hour stokes not really doing too i mean they they uh they are still just headed upwards they are losing a little bit of momentum bitcoin actually breaking down a little bit a few more dollars which always looks like a crazy uh a crazy thing on on spot charts over here but really what's interesting about this is that we do have we do not have divergence right over there but but the rsi is just hanging out between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone so to me that is typically a sign um a, a sign of a bearish consolidation which i would you know if i had to put a name on something like this that's what i would say uh, four hour DMI ADX actually tr uh, trend is strengthening and hey what's up uh, good to meet you Michael Michael Sas Saskin uh, good to have you in here uh, ADX is actually signaling a strengthening trend and the DMI minus is the dominant trend right here on the four hours so when it when when we do brush up against a resistance like this on a higher time frame and you know perhaps a retest again if I had to say something I would say that this was a sell in fact I did sell it on my main account I believe I showed that trade last night or I, I don't show my main account on uh, on streams but I was not trading my streamer account so 
so I probably did not show it, but I probably said something like I was shorting this area right over here. Not only was it uh, not not only was a retest of this guy, but it was also on CMEs, which we've been following as well, a retest of the gap fill right over here. In fact, just beautifully put, just beautifully done, uh, putting a nice dildo body into the dildo body. It's like it's like docking, right? Um, and then a rejection actually after uh, after meeting the 200 exponential right over here. Now you do notice these massive pair of wicks below this support at 3500 one and two again bull wicks um but that's also due to a just a lack of liquidity in these things not too many people are trading them however you know again the overall structure still remains this symmetrical triangle right over here did break down but again did we get the volume characters that i'm looking for for like an actual confirmed breakdown no not at all actually so again you know, these are the times where I have to be honest with myself and say, am I just drawing lines like a like a moron <laughs> or 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 is this actually something that I'm looking at? And I would be more hesitant to say that this that 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 we just haven't really even seen anything significant happen just yet. Um, the, the you know, the biggest significant things perhaps relating to direction are these are these pair of bulwarks down around here. But again, without taking any sort of major without without taking out any major resistances to the upside. I mean, have we ha has it done anything different? Well, no. Um, just another consolidation coming off of this drop right over here. In fact, if I were to look at this, I do see hidden bearish divergence making a higher high on our RSI oscillator right over here and lower high in price action during this consolidation phase. So to me, uh, well, I mean, it's a little bit late to be talking about that. You know, we've already come back down to this area. I guess we, <laughs> it, it, this is a little bit too late, but does it still have some more room to play out? Um, I would argue that, yeah, it does. You know, a lot of the time it'll, it'll pop back down to the lower end of the uh, bearish control region. Now this is CME obviously which can be a lot more flighty floaty and dmi adx giving you a short signal as well well it's it's well passed as well you know these sorts of things um uh it's just an unfortunate reality because i can't be streaming all day long i mean i, I like to have somewhat of a life uh and i really do enjoy this and by the way i j before i go on any further i i actually watched um fud tv's last video i watch i watch a lot of his videos actually he has some pretty damn good content especially with the the interviews that he gets are like pretty damn high quality people it just they have interesting things to say unique things to say and it was uh and, and i read the comments man i just want to say thank you to all the people commenting um that was so fucking nice man i just want to say massive massive appreciation for that so it's like you know it's like you wish you could see that person that that uh that person in real life and just look them in the eye and say hey thank you so hopefully i can look in the camera right here and uh and that'll be good enough for now and maybe if i do meet you later on in life well i can give you a handshake um anyways uh right over here on the daily four cmes you do see the 10 simple and the 21 exponential you know again diverging away from each other so even though we've had those hunts to the downside um yes Today and in the early morning hours of, uh, of today for CMEs, again, still using this guy as resistance. And to me, that is likely to lead on to more of the same as these as these moving averages are tested and so far rejected. Again, doesn't mean that that it can't get above it. It's just for now. You know, I have to see proof, not promises, um, in, in, until I change my mind. That is what trading is all about. Again, uh, one of the things that my mentor used to say was it works. Intel it doesn't, which really used to piss me off and it might piss you off as well. Uh, but understand that that's, you know, that's really all it has to be. You're not going to be right every time. Or, I mean, I shouldn't say that you aren't, but it, what I found during trading is that I cannot, there's no way to be perfect. I'm going to take losses. So how do you make this sustainable? Well, you just mitigate those losses. Anyways, going back on to spot charts right over here. Um, for the people who are, uh, I'm sure, you know, I always get messages like this. I know that this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm based off the messages that I did get. If you did take a short when I took a short right over here, well, out of, uh, I, I did just get out most of my position right over here uh, on my other screen. It looks like I did get filled on that wick down to 50. I think I got filled at 59 and a half. Uh, so again, $30 scalp, um, you know, nothing. It's like, it's not going to fucking change your life or anything like that. Just a scalp again, just based off of the 200 expansion moving average right over here. Uh, I'm pretty Pretty, pretty happy to take trades off that uh, more often than not. Anyways, go to the higher time frames. I do want to check out the two day and I do want to talk about the weekly and the two week because it, we are actually getting to the end of the month here and the monthly and the two week are going to come into play and they actually do quite matter a lot and they're actually revealing something that we're not really seeing in spot charts because again, remember the higher level dildo time frames, they help get rid of all of the noise of the lower time frames. I shudder in fear for the person who tries to make a living trading the 15 minute on cryptocurrency that's i used to trade the five minute in traditional markets that can be done in cryptocurrencies 
very fucking difficult. I don't even know. I, I don't know if it can be done, but <laughs> looking at this guy right over here, I just don't even think it's worth the time, really. Um, but two day right over here again, uh, you know, as long as we're below all major movement averages, st you know, still quite bearish. Uh, what do we have on our two day Stokes, which did just get another tick last night? We are still cross to the downside, but losing a little bit of momentum here as we get to the more critical zone. But again, no signal just yet. ADI DMX giving you absolutely nothing, um, which it should not be. Or sorry, which it which is right. We're not we're consolidating, so I'm looking for that one to give me a signal when an actual trend begins once again. Uh, and the RSI on this guy is still trending below the exponential very very important so again these help get rid of the noise where people might be looking at the lower time frames of yesterday and thinking oh my god this is a massive reversal we're going back on to 3800 is what i see a lot of people saying um i don't really see that signature from the higher time frames just yet doesn't mean it can't happen again but i need to see price action confirm itself first that is so fucking important two-day jewel as well uh basically confirming the sell signal um that uh that that uh that time to this down right over here now again when in consolidation and when in this area i don't like taking trades based off the jewel on this area especially on this time frame it's 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 too close it's too close for comfort but when we're in the when we're in the context of consolidation you know i th this is on my rate this is starting to get on my radar for hey you know it's it's going to be difficult to keep this thing in this you know in, in this range for for a long time so be aware of that. Uh, let's go check out the three day. Whoops. Let's get off that. Uh, get to see all my settings there. Nice. Awesome. Great. Uh, three day right over here. Um, three day Stokes crossing down again, this with my settings, which I believe I do reveal on my stochastic video, which is completely free. Most of my content is free, um, on my, on my playlist section on YouTube for technical indicators and strategies. Uh, this thing, whenever I actually do get signals on this, um, with my settings, it typically it, it typically re re removes a lot of the uh, a lot of the noise. I mean, the last signal for a short cross was right over here at 6400. I mean, it literally topped you the or timed you the top of the break before 6000. Before that, you know, you had a few snakes around um, during the month of October, which you know it actually did get you the moves on there. But each and every time before that, whether it was up around here or down around here, it's been timing you the the major inflection points for the market, which uh which is quite important so the fact that we just crossed down for the first time since the break of 6000 is significant to me again this thing very rarely lies doesn't mean it's perfect nothing's perfect not even the jewel is perfect even though i've just i have to say that because it, it's not it's it's not perfect not nothing's perfect but sometimes i treat it like it is <laughs> anyways um you know, uh, uh, going off of that, it, it, it is significant to me, especially when you're angled all like this. You just had the 100 exponential cross to the downside of the 200 exponential moving average right over here. Now all major moving averages are essentially below each other, except for the 377, which is actually governing our, our highs for this section. So, you know, again, as long as, you know, as things migrate their way down, just think of it as like a, like a stone getting ground down and it just gets ground and ground and ground until eventually it falls, which I do believe strongly that we have not seen the lows for Bitcoin. Coin, but unlike most people, I don't believe that it's just going to shoot straight down from here. Uh, I think it's going to be some sort of a, you know, some some sort of an ebb and flow between this low three thousand and low four thousand number four, you know, for for quite some time. Just like six thousand, probably not that long. In fact, I'd be really, I'd be I'd be pretty adamant in saying I don't think it's going to take a year. I think it's going to take like you know a month or two or three or whatever it is but uh but yeah just looking at this guy right over here again uh, if you want to if you want to keep it simple well what do you have over here you have lower highs you have lower highs as governed by this ascending uh this ascending trend line right over here as long as we're below there i have absolutely no reason at all to be even considering this as a low, um, again, if you want the full explanation of that, you know, go check out the playlist titled Long Term Analysis because it's much more detailed than that. It's not just about this. It's about volume. It's about time spent at the lowest time. It's about the percentage reaction. It's about it's about some some of our external indicators, the MVT. It's about volatility. Um, all these sorts of things coming into confluence with each other really suggest that this is not the low. But as far as you know, looking for a trade to the upside, and when other interesting people say that 5,000 is definitely on the table. It's very hard to see that from, from what I look at, um, you know, in, in as long as Bitcoin is essentially opening and closing weekly deals below the 200 exponential. So again, I am, a, I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin. I do believe that it's going to get some crazy numbers, um, that you hear some people speaking on, but I think it's going to take some time. So, uh, to the timing component of this is, you know, quite a bitch and I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Um, anyway, so in the lower time frame, or sorry, let's go back. I want to cover this, the, the, um, 
yeah, let's start with the weekly. Let's start with the weekly. Okay, let's go over here to Bitstamp. And the weekly is interesting, right? Because with that wick down yesterday, uh, all the way down to about 3,400 even on stamp over here, you do actually have continuation off of this bearish engulfing dildo right over here, which was the rejection of the 10 simple moving average. And also, you know, just another rejection of this purple 200 exponential moving average. And again, remember, I am not really willing con to consider that anything. I'm going to go with my assumption that that the bottom is not in as long as three things are present. One, first things first, I need to see a higher high on the daily. Haven't done that in over a year. That would be a good start, but not going to get you finished. This next one and significantly more important and what I'd actually make I'd actually take some longs off of is if Bitcoin could both open and close a weekly total above this purple 200 exponential movement average obviously has not done that, you know, in ever since it got down in this area. So that would be pretty damn huge. And then the third and final, but you know, it's, we're going to know, we're going to likely know beforehand is if it could get back above the breakdown area of 6,000. Um, anyways, as you can see right now, we actually do have continuation off this bear, uh, off this bearish engulfing dildo right over here. So even with this, uh, pump back up, you know, to me, um, it, you know, when you simplify by looking at the higher time frames, nothing's changed here. Uh, if it, even if it were to break back up uh, above its current resistance of 3,600, don't I mean, you know, as long as it's below 3,700 right over here, the 10 simple moon damage on the weekly, it's it's really hasn't done anything different is the problem. And I know a lot of people were looking at this as like an inverted hammer dildo or or an inverted or, or doji dildo or something signaling reversal. Well, again, it's not done in high volume. You didn't you didn't even have continuation to begin with. So it's like zero for two. This is, again, the difference between someone who just looks at Investopedia and it's like, I've studied candlesticks, okay? So you know what that means? Well, it doesn't mean too much. Uh, but hey, you know, when, when talking about trading, again, proof rather than guessing um, as far as trading goes. As far as analysis goes, well, analysts don't have any accountability because they don't trade, <laughs> you know? Uh, that's why they're analysts. Um, so yeah, looking at this guy right over here, you know, it's good to keep that in mind. Now, if I showed you this next, the, these next two charts, you're, I think most people would probably get it pretty damn quickly. This is your three-week chart. This is your three-week, th a three-week chart. If I can not get, if I can get my words out properly, you have the ten simple moving average crossing the downside of the, of the yellow twenty-one exponential moving average right before your ultimate drop off at of six thousand. Very nasty. Now, if I showed you this, what does it look like we're doing right over here on the eighty-nine exponential? It looks like we're consolidating, right? That's what it looks like in the lower time frames. I think most people would agree with that we did we just get in, we will get a new tick on this on uh, uh at the end of this week actually um but after this this consolidation right here just looks like that nice h of hero the hero of death um as far as it currently stands and really there ain't too much holding you up from you know low three thousands uh as far as i'm concerned with this but again remember it's a three-week dildo it takes quite some time to play out um but uh e e even on that you know there, there are a few interesting things to be aware of right over here, right? Let's actually go to the BLX index because I want the full on history for this. Now, I'm going to bring up the ADX DMI and the ADX DMI actually ne basically never flashes a sell signal like ever on this uh, or, or the DMI minus never even gets to be the dominant trend. As you can see, for the first time since 2014, we are actually once again a, a little bit above the signal trend line. I think that this is maybe maybe best seen on a weekly. Uh, yeah, weekly is a little bit better right over here. Again, same thing over here. You know, does do, uh, does the DMI minus you know show itself as a dominant trend very often? I mean, no. It, you know, you had you had your uh, you had your bear market of 2011, 20, 2012 right over here. That's that's when it got above. This was obviously 2014, 2015, and then once again we're above you know here with the ADX strengthening. Obviously, these ones right over here and here, you know, don't really count as those quick spikes. Um, so again, it does you know it does give us it does give us insight into the the seriousness of what Bitcoin is doing right now. Um, anyways, getting back on over to the three week, you know, I, I think most people would look at this and say, wow, that's. Uh, that's a little bit scary. Uh, also, we will be closing the monthly at uh, in what a, like a week or so. So this is now something of of great interest right here. And the monthly is scary to me. The monthly is quite scary because when we go into the lower time frames, we look at it and we say, okay, lower highs. We're being governed. Looks like a bearish pattern. Corrective volume signature. 
A lot of other indicators, a lot of external indicators suggesting that this is very unlikely to be the low. So when I look at the monthly over here, to me, it looks like it wants to have continuation. Of course, this will not be cemented in stone until the end of the month. We have a lot of time until that actually even happens. I mean, ten, or se sorry, seven days is a fucking eternity in cryptocurrency land. No doubt about that. When you've seen, you know, when, when you and I've seen things rally $300 in one minute, that's, you know, a lot can happen in seven days, right? I mean, even, even yesterday, that, uh, that WIC party, it's like... That's a, there's a lot of time for that kind of bullshit before now in the end of the month. But I just want to put this on the radar now because it is getting near the end of the month. And uh, and if Bitcoin does break the 55 exponential moving average right over here, this is going to be this is actually going to be the first time in history that it's actually technically done that. But it, it's it's kind of that's kind of a bullshit thing to say just because you need 55 months to even populate one tick on this to begin with. So it really isn't really had a chance. You know, it started in the bear market of uh, of 2014. Um, and it will have a chance to break it for the first time, you know, this month, actually. In fact, right now it is below, uh, significantly below on spot exchanges. It's currently coming in a little bit below 3,700 on that green 55. So we are about $150 away. But again, that, that can be taken out in the snap of a finger. The problem is, is that even if it does close above, I don't like this because people are looking at this guy right over here and looking at that as a reversal. Everyone, you know, all the hopium induced uh, buying was basically off of that in the last month. People looking at that and just saying that is reversal. And again, remember, this is the difference between someone who just reads Investopedia as an analyst and doesn't, you know, doesn't trade because what do we need? I need to see heavy, extremely heavy volume on this. Do you see heavy volume? on this no you don't but that's because it's the blx blx index and it sucks for volume here we go over here on uh on on what's it called uh, on stamp do you see heavy volume on this it's it's literally not even above the volume moving average i mean it's is it significant almost i i would i, I would say no uh but you know you can you can make you can make uh you you can make excuses for it if you have continuation which we do not continuation meaning i need to see the high taken out and preferably on high volume as well this month has been pretty damn low volume and actually just basically inside the body of the uh of the prior month's dildo so to me that is just consolidation and that's that's exactly what it looks like on the lower time frames as well so again kind of setting up for the higher time frames uh this is starting this is starting to be worrisome right over here it's it's uh, it's not a good signature um, at all in my in, in my in my opinion. Uh, monthly stokes over here are still headed down. They 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 can stay down there, especially on trending moves. But yeah, we really don't have too much to go off of on that. Uh, last time that they actually crossed was the low right over here uh, before your turnaround. So hey, there you go. That's that's a positive thing, I suppose. Uh, monthly RSI dipping into the dipping into the bearish control zone for the first time, or sorry, second time ever in Bitcoin's history. Um, actually the, I believe it's the lowest it's ever gone as well. So yeah, this is the most intense, uh, downwards market that Bitcoin's ever had historically speaking. Um, but this is also a testament to the fact that, you know, you don't, you don't really don't have enough information and price action data over the years to, to get an accurate read on these things. That's, that's why you get those signatures. So less, less of a concern than I think, you know, it, it probably makes itself out to be. Anyways, um, okay, so over here, are we done with the monthly? I think we are done with the monthly. Um, do we want to go back to the lower time frames? I believe I haven't even really rounded these guys out just enough yet. Yeah, I should have started off with this, but uh, but basically nothing's changed the lower time frames as long as Bitcoin is closing like two hour and four hour dildos above uh, 3510. Hard to be bearish off that. I mean, hard to be bearish for like a trade. And as long as Bitcoin is essentially closing uh, two hour and four hour dildos below this 3600 area right over here. Well, it's hard to be bullish off that. Even even if it does close above, uh, sorry, if it does close above, it is it is interesting because I don't I really don't see too much stopping from about 3680, 3700, which by the way would put it right around that monthly 55. That is why I wanted to signal that out. Uh, putting on the volume profile, the uh, po the penis accretion or point of control is right over here, 3620. That's pretty much where we got up to yesterday and sold off pretty much immediately as well. So yeah, that's also going to put a little bit of downwards pressure on price action. But hey, Bitcoin rallying it up right now, uh, 3570, baby, <laughs> crazy shit. Um, anyways, taking this this one back off. I do want to check out the 12 hour. What is our 12 hour saying over here? Um, yeah, 12 hour. Just an, just another test of the 21 reject on now a test of the 10 simple, and so far nothing's really changed. Um, 12 hour Stokes will be losing momentum, and we'll have a chance to cross the upside on this next tick in the next three three hours and 23 minutes. But again, during consolidation nation, these things will snake around quite a bit. Uh, but if it were to cross the upside, uh, that'd be another point in the favor of the bulls, no doubt about that. But when you have a lower time frame oscillators, 
starting to signal, you know, a little bit of exhaustion. You got your three hours over here, you know, actually uh, hinting out across the downside and all the ones below that are, are crossed down right now. Uh, and your ADX DMI is actually signaling a strengthening trend with the DMI minus on top. You know, do we just continue filling out this this block down around here? I'd say that that's probably more likely than anything. Um, you know, and, until told otherwise, until Bitcoin actually breaks this area right here, I'm just going to go with the former trend. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend, right? And uh, to me, this is probably just another lower high. Uh, I'm curious, actually. I'm curious to see what what kind of uh, signature did we get on the RSI right over here? Do we have any sort of hidden bearish divergence? Mm, no, nah, not really. You have regular bearish divergence actually right over here and here. Uh, maybe maybe also replicated on the two hour. Yeah, on the two hour as well. Boom, boom. Um, but did we make a higher high on this? No, we did not. So technically, no, you don't have it. Um, anyways, okay, so let's get on to Mr. Buterol. Mr. Buterol, or no, let's let's first go to GBTC. GBTC is being a... <laughs> GBTC is... Again, this is why it's not it's not good practice to enter into a trade before it's confirmed. You can have a bearish formation like this bear flag right over here, but as long as it's playing rope it up along the support, which it certainly has been, hard to be bearish off that. Again, uh, you do have a very a very corrective volume signature going from left to right. You are in a bearish consolidation pattern, typically speaking. But could this thing, you know, play rope it up along this support once again and maybe even tag the gap of four dollars and seventy cents? Very possible, actually. In fact, that's incredibly possible. So. You know, again, it's, you know, the, the, the market does not reward people for being early. In fact, there's a great saying saying, you know, there's a great saying saying, <laughs> uh, crown is redundant as fuck and a moron. Well, uh, there's also a great saying that says, even if you're early, you're wrong. And this, this, this is an example of it. A lot of people trying to get bearish off this as well, you know, until this thing actually breaks below $4 and uh, what is it like 23 cents and confirms below it on the four hour, you know, hard, hard, hard to take a signal off that. Um, Let's let's go check out the daily on this guy. I'm curious where he closed what, what he closed like. So yeah, daily looks a little bit more bearish than anything though. Uh, Ten simple cross on the down of the of the yellow twenty one. We don't get that divergence just yet, but we do have a negation of this cross right over here. So pressure is down. We do have a little bit of continuation off this as well. And this is you know people are going to call this an inverted hammer dildo. It's not. Uh, it does look weaker, but. You know, again, need to see need to see breaks first. Uh, daily stokes on this guy are crossed down. They are headed downwards. You know, you know more more bear signs and not below the exponential on the daily right over here, headed towards the bearish control zone once again. Um, and the jewel, the jewel, I believe, the ju man taking a trade right here off the jewel is. <laughs> Some cowboys will do it. I will not. I will not, man. Uh, but yeah. That's what I have to say about that. A little bit more bear sides and bullish, but uh, yeah, again, wait, wait for confirmation. All right, let's go check out. Um, let's go check out Mr. Buterol. Let's get on over here. Uh, he has had the more clear chart, um, and I think just an easier, read, uh, easier to read chart as well. But like we said yesterday, you know, if if you spend too much time on the right hand side of this uh, potential head and shoulders, it, it will lose its luster. And I think that that's happened. Um, I mean, if, if, if today it fails to break, it'll definitely have happened. It'll definitely, you know, no longer be viable. So again, uh, patterns evolve. And when you have a failure to break, like you do right over here, I mean, wick one rejected, wick two rejected right over there. You know, you got to be able to roll with price action. I and and I'm pretty much I'm pretty much ready to say that this is no longer a head and shoulders reversal pattern. Yes, the volume characters still do work, but the shape and and the way that the right shoulder is being put it in put in does not. Do we have anything to be aware of on this guy? We do have a little bit of bear. Mm. Nope, we do not. We uh, we we do not have any sort of uh, bearish divergence or anything like that. Um, if we put on our drawing tools, you know, you can see that it, it seems to be filling out some sort of a descending triangle uh, right over here. But uh, spending too much time again, if if it if it fails to break it by the end of today, by by today's daily total close, I'd say this is not this is not a head and shoulders. Um, but for now, I guess I could maybe give it the benefit of the doubt. The way that the exponentials are situated right now are certainly not good. You have the four day, or sorry, you have the four hour a death cross right over here that is still very much in play and uh and as long as we as long as we're respecting the 21 is resistance which we have lost it once again right over here uh i don't look at that as bullish um but it, as you can see it's fighting it, it's certainly fighting it 
uh, you do, you know, the, the, the volume on this bind right over here yesterday, you can see in the overall grand scheme of things is nothing. It didn't even, it actually didn't even come up and meet this trend line. But again, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to do anything like that. I don't want to make it sound like that, but it's just, you know, to put it into context, it's not significant. So is this like a change right over here? I'd say unlikely to be. Um, and, and remember, Mr. Bedrall led the mark to the upside and he actually led the mark to the downside as well off this uh, Wyckoff distribution top. Um, but again, you know, as far as, you know, as, as far as trading goes, as far as, uh, as far as real analysis goes until you actually break this horizontal support right over here, whether you identify it as a neckline or just a, or just a major pivot in which, or, or the 618 fib right over here, nothing, you know, I don't think that there's a trade to be to the downside to be made. Um, you know, yes, it does look bearish. Yes, I would be leaning to the downside just based off everything that we just talked about. But uh, if this thing pops back up and, you know, and tags one, uh, 124, you know, even uh, gets picked up at the 0.5 once again, that's, uh, you don't want to be short right here if that's going to happen. But so far, you know, just rejecting this form of resistance, just like Bitcoin, um, they're basically just fractals of each other. And, uh, you know, that's what I have to say about that. So again, it, it is good that they agree with each other. It is good that we're seeing, you know, this this area is, is being resisted. So, you know, you could take trades off it like I, uh, like I did last night. It's a scalp, you know, it's, it's just gonna be a scalp until we get a full on confirmation of a break of trend. Remember, you know, I, I think a lot of people are really getting tripped up right now looking for like the big home, home run trade. Understand that home run trades are pretty few and far between. I mean, they only really happen, you know, like couple, two to three or four times a year. Uh, more often than not, things are just ranging, you know, so so don't trip yourself up over looking for, you know, the big winner because it's it's likely that it's just not there. And, and the best thing to be doing is either not trading or trading ranges and being in and out fa uh, faster uh, and also not looking at like the five minute chart on in cryptocurrency. That's might might lead you astray. Uh, but hey, if you've been successful doing that, well, don't let me don't let me tell you otherwise. Um, in fact, I have a whole video series on that, but I I, there, there's a reason why I don't do it anymore because I don't think that I don't think that people should really be doing it. Again, this is this is an opinion type thing. Don't like, to, please don't take this as me talking downwards or anything like that. It's not intended to be. It's just I've found that to be not the best way to do things. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, Mr. Buterol, uh, would, I, I would still be bearish on this chart overall, even if it is, even if it does not end up being a head and shoulders. Um, if, as long as we're essentially below this guy right over here, 124, this kind of descending uh, trend line right over here um, as, it, as it lowers down. But uh, again, until you break the 618 or this horizontal, whatever, whichever you want to look at it first, well, hard to, uh, hard to take a trade off that. Again, it's just trading ranges. If it does break above 120, 124, uh, there's a lot of resistance to the upside right over here. So it does make taking trades to the upside difficult as well, 128. Uh, and then you got this guy right over here, 132. Um, and then above 132, things do lighten up. Um, you do have the 386, but I'm actually going to take this guy away as uh, I really think that you'd probably make another run for this area, around 144 and a half-ish area. Um, let's actually throw a fib on Bitcoin. Let's see how he's reacting to this area. I'm curious where, where the bots and algos are picking this thing up and, uh, and dropping it once again. I'm going to guess that we are resting still on the 618. Let's go check it out. And let's see something like this. I'm guessing if we did this on a daily, I'm, I'm guessing it would probably, it would probably populate this just about perfectly. But yeah, we're resting on the 618 as well. Uh, 35, 10 ish area. Again, it, it's, it's the same, it's the same notion essentially as it's difficult to take, it's difficult to take a trade to the downside looking for a nice winner. Um, until this area actually breaks. If that does happen, well, we still got the measure move off this guy. It's certainly much, uh, very, very much in play. There will be supports right around, well, basically right around here, <laughs> right, right around where we spiked down to yesterday, and then right around here, right around uh, 3250, which is also the 786, which Bitcoin seems to love. But notice that the 886 is down around here, around your prior low. So if things do get down around there, I don't want to get too bearish. I want to be very adamant in saying I'd be closing shorts. So you're going to see a lot of people get very, 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 very bearish looking for the next big drop to happen, which I do believe that Bitcoin is in for lower lows, but it's going to take some time. And until that, you know, until we get a full on break of this area, which is also, which remember is also the, uh, the 200 simple on the weekly over here. Well, it's a lot to chew through. It's, it's going to take some time. Uh, again, going, going right over here. Yeah. You can see that the 200 simple lining up just beautifully right around that area. Um, so yeah, alrighty. Uh, we've looked at that. We've looked at that. We've looked at Mr. Buterol. Let's go look at, um, is Mrs. Litecoin still below 32 and a quarter? The critical area for that one? Well, yep, it is. We have an inverted Quasimodo right now, actually. And 
you know, even even with yesterday's bull wick down around here, as long as you're below the 21 and below this uh, resistance trend line, it's very difficult chart to love. Uh, you do have a failure breakout right over here from this inverted Quasimodo. And uh, as long as you're respecting this guy's resistance, yeah, I'm still looking looking down. Uh, again, doesn't mean that it can't break up, but I need but the proof that I need to see is, is above this area right over here. If that were to happen, well, we could actually have a little bit of a party all the way to about 37, uh, 37 bucks. So uh, perhaps a nice trade to be made over there. But same thing on this guy, you know, until you actually break 30 bucks to the downside, it's, you know, what you don't really have a trade or at least I don't really have a trade. Again, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just sharing exactly what I'm thinking right here, right now. Let's get rid of that. Let's go look at Mr. Ripples. How's Mr. Ripples doing? Is he still looking like a sick doggy? Um, Nice wick to the, uh, again, putting on the three day right over here, it gets rid of that noise. It really gets rid of that noise. You have the three day dollar death cross below all major movement averages. In fact, let's go confirm that the 10 simple is still above price action and <sighs> gotta get that off my keyboard, man. Uh, yep, uh, yep, still still right around here. As long as this thing's below 34 and a half cent, it's very difficult chart to love. Very difficult chart to love. Uh, three day Stokes crossing the downside, still headed down, rejected from getting out of the bearish control zone, like out of the deep bearish control zone, actually. And uh, DMI ADX is the ADX is strengthening, no, no dominant trend just yet. I mean, DMI minus would technically be the dominant trend, but uh. You know, this this really does help get rid of the all the noise of the lower time frames. So as long as we're below there, I'd actually be looking to short that area. If things do get back above 34 and a half cents, you know, just like the other cones, it could, you know, it certainly has some room to rally. Uh, I, I, I think at that point, it'd probably have a nice run to about, you know, 41 cents, maybe 40, 44 and a half cent right over there. That's where things do start changing around. But uh, as long as we're below all those areas, you know, the proof, uh, or sorry, I'm just gonna go with the former trend until it told otherwise, um, as always stated, let's go check out uh, let's go check out where was it uh, spies over here yeah traditional markets um, traditional markets as we said yesterday I th I believe I, I actually do believe that that was probably the top and if it does pop back around here if it does pop back to 267 it's probably gonna be a sell you're probably gonna see some sort of divergences on like an hourly two hour four hour hopefully if you see that Again, it's not financial advice, but that's exactly where I'd be looking to take a trade. If it just pops back to about 264 today, I'd still I'd still even try to trade there. But uh, remember, the monthly on this is the one to be going off of. Um, and uh, and when I talk about time in a trade, you know, and when I say like the same thing for spies as I do about Bitcoin, essentially, yes, I am looking for lower lows over time. But uh, and I am looking for for that next big short. But now it's almost that time. The monthly is what I'm going off of. The monthly is why I have these thoughts. So that's what I make the decision off of. And if the monthly closes this next dildo below the 21 exponential, that's 261 and a half. That's where I actually get pretty fucking bearish. Uh, if it closes above, not so much. In fact, if it closes above, I have to really reconsider a lot of things that I'm thinking. But look at this: you have this red dildo uh, crashing back below it. You have a you have a you you have a low volume kind of pump back up. The retest right wiped all the over aggressive shorts out. All of the all the people who thought that they were geniuses, you know, trying to get in on a short trade once again. Again, it was the same thing as Bitcoin popping off of the 200 on the weekly right over here. This is why I don't want to be bearish coming down to any of these major uh, exponentials on a uh, on a weekly. Um, and now we're finally finding resistance along the 21. You have a beautiful cross right over there or a very nasty cross if you're bullish and uh and, and and after that i mean you know as long as you're below there i am bearish that's a pretty fucking nasty cross i mean the last time that you even had that was you didn't even have one over here really you had one in in 2008 uh so pretty bad um pretty bad now Again, I need to see the monthly fully confirmed, but we are getting to the end of the month now. So it is, you know, th this is relevant. Daily looks like a daily looks like a reversal to me, most likely. Um, yeah, there is support to the downside. No doubt about that. It's going to bounce around. It's going to take its time, just like Bitcoin, I'd imagine, probably even more time. But uh, uh, I, th I think if it does bounce up today or, or, or tomorrow, it's probably going to be a sell. Um, you know, I'd be bearish on, as long as this thing's below 267 is former eye. And if, 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 even if it got get uh, got back around there, I'd be uh, uh, I'd probably be a seller. Uh, this is a rising wedge. I, I don't like wedges. I don't like trading wedges. But in traditional markets, I do play out a little bit more. Um, volume, volume, volume catches does fit. The breakout of this does not fit, though. That 
uh, this does not work out as a breakout. Um, so that's typically why I don't like them is because, you know, they, they will fucking lie to you a million times before actually working or even if they do work, but Hey, uh, I do see, I, I do see this as basically just a pump back up above the, the neckline of this head and shoulders reversal pattern, wipe out everyone who tried to short the neckline and then back down. It's fucking classic shit. And that's, you know, that's why you gotta be careful. Don't, don't be over aggressive during these times. Uh, wait for the monthly. If you're, if you're going to be trading the monthly, wait for the monthly. And that's what I'd have to say. To, that's what I have to say about that. Let's go check out data mish, by the way, over here for data, data, dash data mish all over here for, uh, for Bitcoin leverage positions on Finex. And we have the, the daily interest rate still, I mean, like aeons higher than what the shorts are paying the shorts are basically getting free coins to short uh but but it has come down significantly remember this was like literally five not not five times three times three times what it is right now just a couple days ago so it is coming down no doubt about that but still you know it's it's on the significant side it's certainly not it's it's not as significant. I think you'd be paying like a few thousand dollars to hold a million dollars uh position in contracts uh uh per day now um which you know, if you if you're dealing with that amount of contracts, you you should be fine on. Um, but uh, twenty nine thousand open longs versus twenty two and a half thousand open shorts with uh, about three and a half thousand of those hedged. So we really have about nineteen thousand open shorts versus twenty nine thousand open longs. You know, it's still an imbalance, but it's certainly it's certainly you know coming back into contact with each other. So what do I have to say about this? Well. It is a problem when you do have a severe imbalance of these, especially when the overall trend is down and uh, in shorts over here, historically speaking, whenever they get down to this lower 20,000 region, it, it's, 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 it's scary. Again, I don't want to make it sound like you can make a trend line on this. You can't, it can't be done. People who are doing it, they are misleading, they are naive, or they are deliberately misleading, which is just fucked up. Uh, you can't do that. You know, these are very incomplete pieces of the whole, but we can understand that where, historically speaking, where these things have great inflection points on the market and down in these lower 20,000 numbers, it does. Histor again, historically speaking, this was your break of, of or sorry, this was your dump of early August. This was your break of 6,000. We're once again right around here. Uh, this was your dump of, uh, of, of, of January and then February right over here. Um, so when it comes down to these sorts of things, it is significant. It does tell me that, you know, I'd, I'd rather be, you know, uh, it, it is certainly a point in the in the court of the bears. But because both the longs and the shorts are coming, you know, closer and closer to each other, that also makes me believe, and this is where the nuanced pr understandings of these things really comes into play, it makes me believe that if Bitcoin gets back down to that low 3000s number, it's not going to break just yet. It's going to take some time. Everyone's going to get really fucking bearish again. You're going to see the shorts shoot up. And because the longs are already, you know, coming down below that 30,000, in my opinion, the 30,000 critical number, for the longs um you know it's it's gonna be it's you're gonna you're gonna get another you're gonna get another move to the upside most likely um and, and wipe those people out it is uh it's still still a little bit early so again that's what i'd be thinking and uh you know you really got to make people you, you know as far as like the actual bottom go uh as far as like actual bottoming goes on bottoming goes on it's a terrible thing to say um but but what i mean is you actually when the actual bottom does get put in you're, you you want to see those things kind of opposite uh and opposed of each other um right now you see you see the exact sort of signature that you'd see on a corrective move where pretty much more you know you have what like 75 percent people are long and the rest are short um, two to three, which is, I, I think I did that, that math's wrong. Something like that, like 60%, 60% long, 30% short, something like that. I know that doesn't make sense, but 66, 33. 0.33 repeating of course <laughs> Leroy fucking Jenkins um, <laughs> anyways uh, yeah so keep your eyes on that um, I think I'm gonna start to wrap up this video right over here but uh, overall um, hopefully my hopefully my uh, what's it called my uh, video is, is working well my my green screen is working okay definitely do let me know about that um, I really appreciate all the people who've been reaching out holy shit man again a massive uh, like the the amount of help is so so very much appreciated and you know anytime someone goes out of their way to to do something like that for me i i'm i'm more than happy to give back in any way that i can whether it's like a discount on one of my programs or just or or if you need help just yourself or like in trading <laughs> i'm not like a therapist um or, or, or anything else man i'm happy to give back it's really important for me to give back as well it, it's it's one of my core beliefs you know reciprocation is 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 a is, is is integral it's you you have to have it it's it's just the way that the world works um 
But uh, but yeah, anyways, back into lower time frames right over here. Uh, as long as Bitcoin's below this area right over here, 30, well, let's just call it 3,600 to round up. Um, don't really want to be getting too damn bullish. In fact, even if you do break above there, there's not too much edge on this trade all the way to about 3,690, 3,700-ish area. Remember, that will be where the monthly uh, 55 is coming in around. If Bitcoin did even, t uh, you know, pop that area once again, it, you know, to me, it's probably gonna be a sell. Uh, and you do have a nice horizontal coming in right around here. So... By the same token, um, the break to the downside would be initiated below 3510 of two hour, four hour dildo close below there. And, you know, I, I believe that we'd be we'd be just a, another step in in the direction of meeting the measure move off this guy, which we've been following for the last, you know, really the last month and a half. Remember, these things take time, right? These things take time. So th this is a great example to kind of follow because we've been we've been looking at this ever since, you know, uh, late December. And, it, you know, it just slowly works its way down. But as long as we're just, you know, keep on putting in lower highs and, and in, uh, in lower lows and working its way down, yeah, it, that's that's certainly in the cards. As long as we're below the uh, 3850 uh, breakdown point, it's, it's it's exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, the problem is now, though, is if Bitcoin did rally all the way back up to 3850, where would it be meeting? Well, it'd be meeting this downtrend resistance uh, trend line right over here that's been governing all the lower highs. So again, you know, things are starting to slowly and sh surely, slowly but surely come into confluence with each other. Uh, so yeah, if, if things do break back below 3510, I'd be looking towards, you know, you know, yes, you have supports right around here, 3400-ish 3, area, and then you got the 786 right around 3350. But, you know, it's just another step likely in the direction of this full-on measure movement down to 3250-ish area. So that's going to do it for today. I know that we didn't talk about any sort of long-term analysis or anything like that. Uh, definitely go check out the playlist titled Long-Term Analysis. Just the videos probably are already too long uh, to begin with. So definitely check that one out. It's way more in-depth on that sort of a thing. I really lost over it as far as this video goes. But um, but yeah, it's, it's there for you. And uh, I'll be back on later with some live stream action. Look forward to see you guys there. And take care. If not, well, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. And I'll see you soon.